Hi, everybody, and welcome again to this week's Waterloo Wednesday webinar. Today is October 20th, 2021, and today we're talking science. This is our fourth of six faculties to be highlighted during one of our Waterloo Wednesdays, so thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, I usually like to say that within our Faculty of Science, you'll be able to find programs that will allow you to study everything from particles to planets, using microscopes to telescopes and everything in between. So stay tuned, listen to what we have to share about science at Waterloo, and we'll see if there's any chemistry. All right, uh, so a few notes before we begin. If you would like captions, you can turn those on on your own device. If you click on the three dots for the menu bar and then click on the CC, uh, those will appear on your screen. Also, uh, we have our Q&A now open, so you can send in your questions at any point. Uh, as you heard, our team is here to help answer those. So we've got admissions officers, uh, recruitment staff, we have some student ambassadors, so send in your questions, whatever they may be, and we will answer those throughout and uh, watch for some of those commonly asked questions as well, and we'll deal with those in the Q&A at the end. Um, there is, uh, we're also recording this presentation, I should mention, and so you can find this recording along with our health, environment, and arts uh, sessions. They are available on our YouTube playlist, Experience Waterloo. You can search for those there. All right, and then uh, you should probably know who we are. So my name is Jay. I use the pronouns he and him. Proud graduate from our Honors Arts and Business program where I majored in history and uh, one of your hosts for these Waterloo Wednesday webinars. And joining me, uh, like most Wednesdays, is uh, Laura. Laura, would you like to let us know a little bit more about your bio? Uh, well, I didn't study biology, Jay, but I studied honors arts and business, same program as you, so you should have remembered, uh, although my major was in French. Uh, but hello, everyone. As you heard, my name is Laura. I use she, her pronouns, and I, like Jay, am a national recruiter at Waterloo. As we get started this week, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that much of the work of the University of Waterloo takes place on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldeman Tract, which is the land granted in legally binding treaty to the Six Nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Waterloo's active work toward reconciliation takes place across our campuses uh, through research, learning, teaching, and community building, and it is centralized within our Indigenous Initiatives Office. As a descendant of settlers myself, who has spent most of my life living on the Haldeman Tract, I'd like to acknowledge my place within the history of colonization in Canada, and also commit to constantly learning, unlearning, and examining my own biases as I support the reconciliation work that needs to be done within the university, within the region, and of course across Canada. It's mine and Jay's intention to create an environment of inclusivity in this space, and we ask that you also take the time to acknowledge the land that you are located on as well. So in terms of what we are covering today, you might be curious about what we will be getting into. Um, and of course, we'll let you know, as always, about our upcoming events, ways to stay connected with us. Uh, Jay's got a story of the week that you'll want to keep your eye on. Um, that's a joke that will make sense later. And uh, of course, we have got our Faculty of Science up this week, followed by our world famous uh, is a world famous probably quiz and then a Q&A with some of our expert guests today. Um, and speaking of ways to stay in touch with us, uh, of course, we've got our virtual campus tours taking place and we've got our great uh, brochures that you can order through our website, either downloading digital copies or we'll ship hard copies to your home free of charge so you can have your own Waterloo library. Uh, but I also wanted to let you know about a couple of upcoming events that you may want to check out. The Waterloo Virtual Open House is taking place on Saturday, October 30th, and maybe we can get a link added to the chat here for anyone who's interested in registering. Although if you are attending today, you're probably all already on our mailing list and might have received uh, an invitation over the last couple of days. In addition to that, the Ontario University's Fair's second virtual event is taking place on Tuesday, October 26th from 5 till 8 p.m. And if you go to ontariouniversitiesfair.ca, you can find out more details on how to get reminders for that event. And as always, stay in touch with us, with us over our liaison email address, our Beyond Ideas blogging site, as well as our future students page. Okay, Jay, I'm gonna throw it back to you and I'm hoping we can get some payoff on that eye joke I made earlier. Yeah, that was a, a great setup, Laura. So I'll try to uh, to complete this. 
Uh, so last week, we actually let you know about how environment and science were involved with the new Waterloo Institute for Sustainable Aeronautics. And this week, we're announcing that Waterloo, specifically our Faculty of Science, is partnering with the Hong Kong Polytechnic University to launch the first international hub for eye and vision research. And uh, according to the World Health Organization, more than one third of people around the world suffer from some form of vision impairment or blindness, and at least one billion of these cases could have been prevented or have not yet been addressed. And this new research hub has the goal of improving eye health in the region and abroad, and will address five key areas of health, including myopia and eye growth, ocular drug discovery and delivery, vision enhancement, tear film and ocular surface, and advanced optometric technology. Uh, and researchers from Waterloo's Faculty of Science will collaborate with Poly U in Hong Kong to tackle new solutions for these areas with the potential to improve quality of life for millions of people around the world. So this is a pretty cool story and uh, coming out of our Faculty of Science just, uh, just this week. Uh, so really looking forward to what they come up with and I will share that link in the Q&A as well. Uh, but now it's time to get to our first special guest of this week. She is a returning guest, so great to have you back. Caitlin, could you let us know more about yourself? Of course, yes. So my name is Caitlin Derbecker and I use the pronouns she, her. I am the recruitment coordinator for the Faculty of Science. So if you've ever emailed science at uwaterloo.ca or had any connection, uh, that was possibly me that you're chatting with behind the scenes. So nice to see you again, or hopefully we'll be able to chat in the future as well. I am a graduate from Waterloo too. I graduated from Waterloo and have stuck around ever since. So it's definitely a great place to be, um, a great city and an awesome university. Great to have you with us again today, Caitlin. Uh, so to start off, I'm going to give you a really tough question. I'm just kidding, it's an easy one. <laughs> Could you give us a quick overview of our Faculty of Science? Of course, yes. So the word that I always like to use when I'm explaining science is discovery. Uh, so science really is all about discovery and it's driving the human race forward by increasing our understanding of the world around us. It's going to help us to uncover the past while also looking at what the future might hold, and it's going to take us beyond our limits of our universe to infinite possibilities. So at Waterloo specifically, you're going to use unique tools and technologies and innovation to push our boundaries of science forward. So this could be through one of our integrated programs or delving into one of our pure science programs, but really we're going to equip you with the skills and knowledge that you need to succeed here and be the future of science. So if you're somebody who likes to get your hands dirty, you like to be involved in labs, you really enjoy that part of high school, then one of these programs could be right for you. And at Waterloo, we really do focus on experiential learning. We have many partnerships across campus that you can be a part of. So if this, something, if this is something that sounds interesting to you, then we do have 17 different direct entry programs that you can be a part of. And 14 of those 17 programs offer co-op. And we also have two professional schools, which I'll chat about a little bit later too. All right, Caitlin, so you said 17 programs and I never get that number right. So I know you're gonna help me out with that now. Um, quite a few options, some with some similarities and then other very distinct programs. Could you give us a bit of an overview of, uh, of what these 17 programs are in the faculty? Of course, yeah. So we've kind of broken these up into different areas. Uh, so we have life sciences, physical sciences, and interdisciplinary. So we'll go through each one of those today to give you an understanding of what those 17 programs really look like. So if we start off here with life sciences, the main topic in here is going to be biology. So looking at living things. Uh, so the first program we actually have there is biology. And in bio, you're going to study all aspects of the living life and living creatures. So anything from cells to genes to species and diversity. Within biology, there's been some of the greatest discoveries that have been made, including things like mapping of human genomes, identifying the structure of our DNA, and even how photosynthesis works. So all of these things happened because we had dedicated science students just like you who looked at the world a little bit differently. So really in biology, you're going to dive in right from day one because it's that direct entry program. And we have more than 80 different biology courses available, which give you a lot of different options. Um, so if you're somebody who wants that overarching uh, sort of topic of biology with a lot of flexibility, you can add in those electives, maybe even a minor, then this might be a good place for you to start. Our next one there is biomedical sciences. And if you're someone who's aiming for a career in something like healthcare or medicine, then this might be the right place for you to start. 
So in biology, you're just going to focus on those human systems and how their functions are related to health, disease, and really the healing process within our body. You'll be able to diversify your knowledge and learnings about viruses and bacteria and other microbes and really how these can impact human health. Um, you'll look at how the body ages and how injuries impact us, and you'll really get that foundation in biology, chemistry, physics, and math to prepare yourself for those additional requirements for something like a medical school or a health-related profession that you might be interested in. We also have our biochemistry program there too, um, and biochemistry has been around for quite some time, but really over the past 200 years, there's been many advances in technologies and tools that have allowed our biochemists to focus really on the fundamentals, to answer questions, to look at things like the structures of molecules and enzymes, and to really diversify that metabolic process. So you'll create chemicals, you'll analyze genes, you'll start with that broad foundation of science in your first year and really dive into that biology and chemistry process with things like physics and calculus. So this program really is a combination of biology and chemistry. It's not biology with a little sprinkle of chemistry. It really is those two coming together. And the last one we have in life sciences is physics. So in physics, you're going to take a blend of psychology, science and math courses, and you'll really be able to put an emphasis on research methods and data analysis. So in your third and fourth years, you'll have a chance to work in small groups and really get a chance to work in your laboratory training and also have one to one with professors. I remember when I was in university, I used to go to these studies and try and figure out what they were trying to figure out about me. And I thought that they were really, really neat. Um, so when you're in science specifically, so it's a bachelor's of science degree. There's also a psychology program in arts. Um, and it is kind of a launch pad for people who are interested in behavioral neuroscience, forensics or psychology, cognitive psychology, um, and maybe even a medical career, medical career as well. So the next overarching topic that we have is going to be our physical sciences. And in physical sciences, we're going to focus more on chemistry and physics. So those are going to be the two topics where you'll see them come together. So the first one there we have is chemistry. Um, so in chemistry, you're going to study a general overview. So it's going to be things like um, analytical chemistry, organic, um, nanoscience, and sort of many different other areas. You can specialize in things like computational chemistry, where you'll study the fundamental properties of atoms and molecules and reactions using quantum mechanics. Um, and you'll learn to solve those chemical problems using computer modeling. So kind of how I said about biology, where it's that more general program, chemistry is similar in that sense, where it's more general, where you'll have lots of opportunities to add on different electives and even add on a minor if you're interested. The next one we have there is earth science. So in earth science, you're really gonna learn about the world that's under your feet through things like geology, geophysics, geochemistry, hydrology. And as we know, the world has been around for more than 4 billion years and things have changed from the, in the world. So sometimes slowly, like a mountain being built or sometimes quickly, uh, like a meteorite hitting the, hitting the earth. So in earth sciences, you're gonna learn about the makeup of a planet from rocks and soil, the effects of climate change, and we know that we depend on these resources around us. So earth science is really important right now to focus in on things like materials, organics, gases, and water. So I kind of like to explain earth sciences is you're focusing on the earth and down, um, where I'll talk about environmental science later, which is kind of the earth and up. The next one we have here is life physics. So if you're somebody who likes the combination of biology and physics, then this might be the program for you. If you're also interested in a medical technology career or the health related career, this might be the program as well. So you're really gonna get a solid foundation in physics, chemistry and biology. And the nice thing about life physics is that you'll get really small classes and lots of hands-on opportunities to get involved in research and teaching. Um, so the way I like to explain sort of this program in more of a simple way is if you're trying to look inside someone's body without cutting them open, how do you look inside? So things like an MRI, a CAT scan, ultrasound. So that's really what students in life physics are focusing on and looking at those new technologies and things that we can improve. The next one we have there is materials and nanoscience. So they're focusing on really, really, really little things. So they'll discover how to manipulate atoms and molecules and they'll learn the ins and outs of designing composite materials, ceramics and semiconductors, um, things like fuel cells and, and sort of the list goes on. Also a very small program, we'll have plenty of opportunities to connect with your professors. So it's a mix of chemistry, physics, and math. 
Um, and there's also quite a few highly specialized material science courses that you'll learn about as well. So an example kind of in this is why does a material have a stability and sort of strength over flexibility? So what's that makeup of that um, of that material that makes it the way that it is? The next one we have on the list is medicinal chemistry. So if you're somebody who's interested in creating a life saving drug, then this might be a topic for you. So definitely a hot topic right now with COVID and trying to figure out what uh, what we all need in order to, to make our world continue safely. So you'll really look at physical and analytical and organic chemistry. So really a chemistry heavy program. Um, and you're gonna take specialized courses in things like bio-based chemistry and pharmaceutical drug design. You'll be able to focus in on your lab skills and there's over 20 different chemistry labs that you'll be able to take throughout this program. So lots and lots of labs. So when you graduate from this program, you'll be equipped to design and create drugs um, and also be able to evaluate the potential medications that we have in our world. We're almost getting through the list here. The next one's mathematical physics. Um, and in this, you're gonna combine theoretical physics with high level math, um, with things like equations, vector calculus, and, and applied mathematics. So you'll get the chance to learn in hands-on labs, less labs than a chemistry student would, um, but you'll also be joining in conjunction with our faculty of math, which is the largest in Canada, um, while also studying with our physics department of our own. The next one we have here is physics. So kind of like how chemistry was that general program, that next general program we have here is physics, where you're gonna study the fundal and fundamental aspects of nature. So in this, you'll study things like applied physics and astrophysics and biophysics, and then you're gonna complement your learning with those hands-on learning opportunities. And you're gonna study things like qualitative measures and analytical skills, things that the industry are looking for. This is another great program if you're looking to add on a minor, and like I said, have that flexibility. Next up, we have our physics and astronomy, which is really for people who dream about the stars or the galaxies and wanna know more about it. Um, you'll complement this degree with your studies in physics and math um, and add in that astronomy piece. So it is an observational course, which means it's very hands on and you'll be able to use those telescopes that we have on campus, which is really cool. It does have a strong tie to our IQC, which is our Institute for Quantum Computing um, and provides additional resources for students who are interested in research. And then sort of the last overarching area that we have here is our interdisciplinary program. So these are kind of programs that bring two studies together into one. So that first one that you'll see there is biotech CPA. And this is a world where it's a really highly specialized program for students who can understand sort of that spreadsheet side of things where we're looking at gene sequencing and um, also be able to apply that with that business knowledge. So you'll be able to look at accounting that Waterloo and then also be able to study things like biotechnology um, within that program. So you'll learn about biology, chemistry and biotechnology and at the same time you'll be learning about auditing, finance and management um, with our School of Accounting and Finance. The next one we have there is environmental science where you'll get a solid understanding in chemistry. So this is kind of where I was saying you're going to study from the world up um, because you're going to be studying things like um, ecology and aquatic systems and geology and hydrogeology. So you'll learn about things like climate change and groundwater flow, contamination, our impacts on the environment um, in order to help with waste disposal, human engineering and earth processes. You will specialize in that program in either ecology, geoscience or water science. The next one we have there is honor science. And honor science is our most general degree that we offer um, within the Faculty of Science. So this is also a great program for students who are looking at medical school because you can just then take those required courses that you need. It's also good for someone if you want to study all areas of science. So you want to get a little of chem, a little of bio, or it's also good for someone who's not exactly sure where they want to start. So this general program allows you to kind of create your own degree and find something that you're passionate about. Our next program is science and aviation and this combines science with pilot training. Um, so in this, you'll be able to focus your studies. Typically, we see either earth sciences or physics, where you'll focus your science-based areas on and actually gain your commercial pilot's license, which is done with conjunction with the Waterloo Regional Airport. So you'll get to over 205 hours of flight time. And when you graduate, you'll have your bachelor's of science degree along with your commercial pilot's license. And the final course here, 
finally made it to the end of our undergraduate programs is science and business. So this is a one of a kind degree that's going to equip you for your scientific knowledge and have those business skills involved. So science and business is going to allow you to combine biology, chemistry and physics with courses like economics, accounting, marketing, law and entrepreneurship. You can specialize your degree or you can keep it broad in order to take courses that you might be interested in. Um, and you'll it's, it's a, a unique program because you'll be able to work in small group settings to work on things like case studies and business plans and all those different marketing analysis that are out there. And the last area that we have are professional programs. So we have two professional programs, which are pharmacy and optometry. These programs both require you to have a certain amount of undergraduate studies. So for pharmacy, you need two years. For optometry, you need three years. For these programs, we recommend you look at biology, biomedical sciences, or honor science to take that um, your undergrad before you're applying. Pharmacy is actually the only co-op pharmacy program of its kind in Canada. And optometry is the only English speaking school of optometry in Canada. So both unique opportunities if you're looking at applying to those. The other awesome thing is if you do your two or three years of your undergraduate studies at Waterloo, and then if you apply to pharmacy or optometry, we'll, when you graduate, we'll give you both your bachelor's of science and your PharmD or your optom degree. Where if you do your two or three years somewhere else and you come to study with us, that's totally okay too, but then you'll graduate with just that PharmD or optometry and not that science degree. So kind of an added bonus to doing both of those at Waterloo. Caitlin, I feel like you just took us on a whirlwind tour of the faculty. Amazing. So maybe if you need to take a sip of water, now's your time. We'll give you a little bit of a break um, as I slowly read the next question to you so you can get hydrated. Uh, so there are so many great options to study within our Faculty of Science at Waterloo, which you've outlined so well. Um, but we know for some students it can be tricky to figure out which discipline is the right one for them. But your team has come up with a pretty handy tool to help with that. So could you explain what exactly we're looking at here, Caitlin? Yeah, for sure. So some of those programs that I talked about might have seemed a little unfamiliar or something that you weren't quite sure about before. Um, and that's OK, because typically you're only studying biology, chemistry and physics in high school. And now at university, we have 17 different programs that you can look at. So this map is going to help you sort of break that down and show you what you're studying now and how they intermingle to make those programs that we offer. So if you take a look at this map here, for instance, if you look at something like the biology and the physics and you follow those lines to the middle, you're going to see that life physics program there. Uh, if you take a look at um, what's another one we can do here, we take a look at biology and you're going to add in. So if you follow it down plus human, you're going to get biomedical sciences. And then if you also add in behavior, you're going to get psychology. So for those for some of those programs, you're not exactly sure how they connect to one another or you're not sure if it's the right program for you. Starting out with those three main areas. So if you're like, ooh, physics isn't for me, you can cover up those physics program and just focus on those other main two. So just a unique tool that might help you sort of figure out which program is the right fit. Yeah, I, I find this really helpful. I have it quite a bit. I've got it here in front of me right now. And just as an extra little promo, uh, if you order it, your brochure, get the Faculty of Science brochure, that's where the map is, or I'm not sure what you call it, but this handy tool, that's where it is. Um, okay, so a common question that we get, Kaylin, and I know that you get this too, is which programs are best for students who are looking to pursue a career in a health or medical profession? And uh, we had Claire on from the Faculty of Health just a few weeks ago and uh, let us know about some common pathways through that faculty, but there are certainly some through the Faculty of Science as well. I know you've kind of hinted at them already, but uh, could you tell us a little bit more uh, about what you offer for students who are looking uh, to go this route? Absolutely, yeah. So for students who are looking at medical school, like I mentioned, we do recommend biology, biomedical sciences, or honor science. Um, the reason we recommend these three is because it's going to give you the flexibility that you need to apply to medical school after three years if you choose to, but also the knowledge that's necessary for you to do well in medical school. These aren't the only options. There are definitely many other paths that you can take. Just recommending if you're kind of looking for that quick and easy path, these might be the program or the ways that you might be interested in that. 
So here on this map, you can see that there are many health related careers and professions that students go into. So things like a dentist or a psychologist, optometrist, a physician. Um, and there's there, there's some of the most common science professions that we have. Um, but you'll see on here that there's also other science professions. So if you're someone who's thinking maybe medical school is not right for you, that's totally OK, because there's many different pathways that students can take from their programs when they graduate from Waterloo. Yeah, and as you've already touched on, Caitlin, science grads go into careers from more than just health and medical areas. Um, and I know in many cases, students will discover those other career or subject areas once they're on campus and in programs. Uh, but wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about where science grads are working or maybe not working, but going after they finish their undergraduate degrees with us. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the really nice things about science is that there's so many pathways. So we're not just going to like pigeonhole you into one way and say, if you take this program, this is what you're going to do. In some cases, there are going to be some that lead you down a better path, um, but really it does sort of leave it open for interpretation to figure out what you love. A lot of times when you picture a scientist, you probably think of someone in a lab coat who's wearing goggles, maybe someone who's pipetting some random chemicals in a test tubes. And that's totally true. Scientists absolutely do that. But the nice thing is that scientists are needed all over the place in so many different areas. So you don't just have to work at a traditional lab bench if you don't want to. Um, there are people like lawyers and pilots and data analysis and project managers and computer scientists. Really, the, the list goes on. So where you end up is really going to depend on three things. So first off, what science major are you in? So that could have a difference for you. What experience have you done? So is there experience through co-op? Have you done research? Have you done lab work? And really, where do your interests lay? So what are you actually passionate about? Now, when you put these three things together, that's gonna help you guide you down this correct pathway. So you'll see here there's work, there's professional school, graduate school, and certificates. Um, so we really need scientists to shape our future and to look at breakthroughs with things like a pandemic or energy issues or climate change. Um, and that's what you are all what you are all here for. Our grads are going to go down a variety of different pathways. So you'll see here some will go directly into work. So those are common ones like a geologist or a chemist or a data analysis. Those professional school programs are going to be medical heavy. So medical school, pharmacy, um, naturopath, there's a whole bunch of different medical ones uh, that might happen. There's some certificates that you may know about, things like a teach, like teacher's college if you're interested in education. <clears throat> Maybe you want to go into ultrasound after um, a program in, in like life physics. And many of our students are also going to go to graduate school. So if you love of research. If you're interested in research, you might partner up with a professor throughout your um, time as an undergraduate student and learn that you really love that research side of thing, then graduate school might also be the right path for you. So these are, is absolutely not an exhaustive list, but just a good start for you to think about where your path could be um, and where you might fit in best. All right, thanks, Caitlin. Um, our next question, probably not coming as a surprise to our audience if they've watched our previous webinars with our other faculties. We do like to highlight the different ways that students can gain some uh, hands-on learning experiences through their education, whether that's in the classroom or co-op or other ways. Um, so uh, we're going to ask that about science, but uh, this is where we're also going to bring in some of our current students to help answer them. So uh, to talk about some experiential learning opportunities, we're going to introduce you to Brickreedy. If you could introduce yourself and then let us know about some of the things that you've been involved in. Hello everyone, my name is Prakriti. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm a third year biology student. And what can you let us know about some of your experiential learning that you've done in science? Here at Waterloo, we have many different ways for learning what you love through experiences, and we give high importance to experiential learning. And it's something we're very proud of at, here at Waterloo. My favorite part about my program is definitely the hands-on experience. In my two years at Waterloo, I have gotten so many different experiences from labs, from chemistry, biology, to bioinformatics. Chemistry labs are always such a fun time. You get to do everything on your own, from synthesizing solutions to titrations, and who doesn't love like a lab with colorful solutions, right? And my favorite course so far has been the microbiology lab. I loved going into the lab, having my own desk, my own equipment, and just discovering the world of bacteria at my own pace. 
And then with bioinformatics, I got to experience a totally different meaning to lab, which I had never thought of before, with our computers being our biggest tools to explore genes and databases, while we're literally just sitting at one spot and discovering all of the genes and such a great, amazing world of biology. How cool is that? Having the opportunity to experience all these things is definitely the reason why I love science here at the University of Waterloo. Thanks for creating and uh, a little bit different than my history courses, that's for sure. Uh, Eric, uh, welcome to the webinar. If you could let us know a little bit more about yourself and uh, some of your co-op experiences. Yes, hi. Uh, so my name's Eric. I use he, him pronouns. and I'm a mathematical physics student in my 4B plus year. I loved Waterloo so much that I stuck around an extra year to finish my degree uh, and take a minor as well in uh, management studies. All right, and let's hear about some of those uh, co-op experiences and other experiences. Yes, there. so co-op, uh, you've probably heard about it already if you've been in contact with Waterloo. As a science student from your second year onwards, you'll be rotating between a, a school term and a co-op term if you decide to uh, you if you decide to take the co-op program. Most of our science programs offer co-op along with it. And co-op, I found, is a great way to really narrow down what sort of career path you might be interested in. Uh, so before we saw all the different career pathways that students have taken in the past, and co-op is a way to figure out what you might like and what you might not like. Personally, I used co-op as a way to narrow things down. In my co-op terms, I worked in uh, data science and machine learning with Government of Canada, as well as a private, uh, a private company in the consumer packaged goods industry. And then I also did a research term, more physics, with, that was like the math side of my degree. And I also did a research term at Triumph where I focused on uh, creating a little digital uh, interface for working with some of their beamline experiments. Uh, and one of my overall favorite things about co-op, besides the work, was being able to live in a new place if you found a co-op job that was outside of Waterloo. Some students stay in Waterloo, uh, but my, uh, my experiences brought me outside of Waterloo to Ottawa, which is my hometown, and to Vancouver. And I really enjoyed getting to go to Vancouver in the winter and ski and uh, skiing because I was there. Uh, so it really co-op is a great way to like get experience, not just work experience, but also more uh, like life experience and more just travel experience even. Uh, and now as co-ops have started to go from online to in person again, uh, people are having a lot of those opportunities. Uh, you make some great points there, Eric, and I, I love your enthusiasm about, you know, not just the extra things that come along with that, with co-op, but also the work itself is often, you know, pretty interesting. And where it's not, I think that's a lesson learned on maybe your career that a student might not want to pursue for themselves, right? Exactly. I'm in a much better spot now than I was at the beginning of my degree in terms of like where I, knowing where I want to go. Exactly. Love to hear that. Okay, so um, we know that science students are known for being really active outside of the classroom as well. And I know I'm always impressed uh, that they seem to know each other quite well. Um, so we're going to bring on one more student, Martina. Uh, so if Martina, you'd like to introduce yourself and maybe tell us, you know, what's going on with student life within the Faculty of Science. Of course. So hi, everyone. I'm Martina. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm in my third year of science and business at Waterloo. So to get into student life, there are just many opportunities for you to get involved at Waterloo and to have fun in different ways and to meet a lot of other people, whether they be in the Faculty of Science or in other faculties. So with that being said, Waterloo has over 200 clubs, so there are very many clubs and there is definitely something for you there. They have clubs that range from like food clubs, they have athletic clubs, they have a salsa dance club. I've seen um, people on campus dancing to salsa music, so that's also really cool. But just a bunch of different clubs for you to get involved in and to meet other people with similar interests. And also science has their own clubs. We have the Science Society and other um, clubs like the Chemistry Club, the Science and Business Student Association. So when you come to Waterloo, you're automatically a part of these clubs. So you can go and hang out in the club rooms, do your homework, study with other science students. And they also hold events and activities that you can attend that are also really fun and a good way to meet people. Um, other things you can get involved in are athletics and recreation. So there's intramurals, they have their soccer teams. I've I haven't done any, but my friends have, so I've attended games and they look very fun and just like a good time to meet other people. And also fitness classes like Zumba and spin classes, which I have done, and those are also really fun. So those are all opportunities to get involved. And just the last thing I wanted to mention was um, 
uh, the student life through residences. So living in residence is another way to meet other people. If they have these um, residence communities where you can live with people in your own program or in science, so that's another way to meet other students, which is what I did and it was really awesome and fun to meet other people. Thanks, Martina. And um, when I was last working on campus, I would always walk through the science, the main science building, and it seemed like that club's hallway was always a really happening spot. Um, didn't matter if I was coming in, in the morning or heading out at the end of the day, there was just tons of students and activity going around there. So uh, glad to see that starting to uh, uh, get back up again uh, this term. Um, and don't go away, students. Uh, we've got some more questions coming your way in just a moment. But uh, first, Kaylin, everything that we're hearing so far sounds pretty great. But I'm wondering if you could sum it all up for us. Why science at Waterloo? Yeah, for sure. I cheated a little bit and I looked at the question. So I'm going to start off kind of answering one of those questions a little bit. Um, is that there's two awesome things about starting at Waterloo. One is that their direct entry program. So the program that you pick is the program you're starting in. So you don't start in a general year. You don't have to reapply after your second year to a program. You're going to start directly in that program. Now, the other awesome thing is that if you apply into the wrong program and you want to change around a little bit, that's OK. So if you decide you, you know, you started in biology and you want to change to biomedical sciences, you can do that. Um, we have our academic advisors who are there to help you. So changing that program is OK. And Martina is going to talk a little bit more about that um, a little bit later as well. But beyond that, um, one thing that I really love is that our professors really care and they a lot of them are going to know you by name. Um, you can walk down the hallway and, you know, they'll wave at you and they'll ask what's going on and that kind of stuff. So they really, really get to know you. But beyond that, you'll have the opportunity to really explore different programs with the over 100 different courses that we have that are going to give you lab experience. You'll be able to get your hands dirty and what that's looking like. So again, if you're somebody who's always in questioning, you know, what is there to discover? What out there is there that I can learn? And you're constantly wanting to learn more than this is probably a place for you to start. Um, one of my favorite things about the faculty is how involved those students really are and the relationships that they create. So Jay kind of stole my thunder about the STC hallway, but it's one of my favorite places to walk down. There's always students, you know, eating food, playing cards, hanging out, and it's just such a joy, joyous place to be. So I really, really love that. And then again, just that hands-on learning opportunity. We have new labs, we have new buildings. They're, they're beautiful, they're white, and they're bright, and they're chances for you to be able to get a better understanding of what that looks like. So things like a flip lab where you start with the actual, like you start at the end and you work towards the beginning is a cool example of ways that you can look, um, you can look at science a little bit differently. Keith, one of our professors, he involves cake in one of his uh, classes. So he just to describe folds and faults, he puts dinosaurs in different layers of cake. <clears throat> so you can see how it makes a difference throughout that. You get to eat the cake afterwards, and if there's leftovers, he brings it up to me. So, so we love Keith for that. Um, but there's just so many different opportunities and unique chances for you to get involved at Waterloo. And um, yeah, if, if it's some, if science is something that you're passionate about, then one of those 17 programs will most definitely fit your needs. Caitlin, if you wouldn't mind sending me the course code for that dinos and cake course uh, later on, I'd really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, well, thanks for that. But before we head to our quiz and Q&A, we always like to give our special guests an opportunity to share some final tips and advice to any prospective students who are tuning in. Um, so I think we're going to go to Prakriti first with this question. Just wondering if you uh, have any anything else that you'd like to share with those listening who are considering science and considering the University of Waterloo. I think my biggest tip would definitely be to put yourself out there and join clubs and societies that you enjoy. Once I started joining clubs, I met so many people that have similar likes and also got a lot of information about many resources. Like Jay and Caitlin mentioned, the club hallway is there's always something happening there and the bond of the community is absolutely amazing. I actually find, found one of my best friends through a club, so I would definitely highly recommend it. It's a heartwarming story. Thanks for sharing. Eric, you're up next. Tips and advice. Yeah, so uh, so I've talked about co-op previously, but I also want to highlight that uh, there are regular programs available in some uh, in some uh, science programs. And the nice thing about these is they give you a little bit more flexibility of courses. With co-op, you're like away on co-op terms and at the school at school terms, and it might be harder to take some electives that uh, you want you're interested in. But with a regular program, you have the option with summers off, so you might use that to 
uh, take more courses, take courses early so that you have less courses to take later, and maybe uh, find some work experience on your own, maybe working with a professor uh, or something like that. Uh, so yeah, co-op is a big thing, but also if it suits you better, regular program is also great for its flexibility. Yeah, especially for those students who might be planning to go to medical school or other health related mm -hmm. professions who have lots of years of study ahead of them anyways. All right, thanks for that, Eric. And last word goes to Martina. Tips and advice, Martina. Yes, uh, so my point of advice would be to take advantage of the supports that are there for you on campus because they are there for you to use. So as Caitlin mentioned, um, switching programs is something that is definitely possible. And I just wanted to mention that I actually um, did switch programs. I was originally in chemistry in my first year, and then I went into science and business. And I was able to do this by reaching out to my advisors in the undergraduate office and allowing them to give me some advice with respect to my career and what I wanted and what I wanted for my program. And this helped me to decide that I actually did want to switch programs and they helped me make that transition very seamless and as easy as possible. So that would be my point of advice is just to um, reach out, get the support that you need and the resources that you need because they are there for you to use. Thanks for that. And actually, I said last word goes to Martina, but Caitlin, I think you've got something to add as well, right? Yeah, sort of going off Martina, I just think it's important to reach out for help. So if there's anything you ever have questioned, if you know you're you're struggling in a course, or you just want someone to help you pick your courses, you're not exactly sure, you know, what course is right for you. Just reach out to your academic advisors or whatever that support might be that you need, um, and they're there to help. So uh, just like in university, when you have your uh, guidance counselor there, we also have different people who are there and ready to help you. So reach out to us. We're here for you and we're excited for you to be a Waterloo Warrior. Awesome. Thanks everybody for that advice. And uh, I know you're not going far. We still have a little bit of time and we've had lots of great questions coming in as well. So great tips and resources that we've heard so far. Uh, we are going to get our video back up shortly, but as long as you can hear us and see these slides, we're good to go. Um, I do want to highlight one of our Beyond Ideas articles that offers some really helpful advice on how to choose a program in the Faculty of Science. Um, it also will let you know what professions and careers the 17 majors and programs can lead to and much more. Uh, so I'm going to post that link and uh, a little bit earlier I also shared a website that has uh, some great resources and tips for those who are interested in uh, going into a health uh, pathway or health profession as well. Um, but now it is a very important time of our webinar and you don't need our cameras on for this. It is time for our weekly quiz. So we will get to our Q&A in just a moment. But first, we want to give away a couple Waterloo Warriors hoodies. So I have a feeling that many of you joining us today, you have uh, you've seen this before. You know what to do. You're ready to go. But if this is your first Waterloo Wednesday, uh, welcome. And uh, here's how it works. You can open up the Q&A box and uh, on the next slide we are going to show you three questions what we're going to be looking for are the first two individuals who can submit the three correct responses along with their email all in one post so to get started type your email now but do not hit enter uh, because we can't track it if it doesn't all come together uh, so please just um, uh, you can type your email now and then get ready to have the other three responses. Once you have that, hit enter. We're looking for the first two with the three correct answers and your email. I hope that covers it. If not, this is your practice run for uh, a future week. But uh, Laura, let's show our three questions for this week. Uh, question number one, name a faculty of science program that could lead to medical school. So I think we heard a couple of times there. I think uh, I think we have three that we typically recommend from within the Faculty of Science at least. Uh, so let us know one of those. Question number two, what is one non-medical career that a science graduate could go into? Lots of options there, I think, uh, but uh, interested to see what uh, what we get here. And number three, name a program that one of our student guests is in. So three students, three different programs, all within the Faculty of Science. Uh, if you need, I think take a guess, but uh, hopefully you remember something that one of them shared today. So those are the three questions for this week. A Waterloo Warrior hoodie up for grabs. We're going to give away two. Um, and uh, I think as we start to see these come in, I'm just going to take a peek. Yep, it looks like we've got some answers coming in. So while our team is uh, looking for the first two, the correct ones, I'm going to share uh, the answers to these. Uh, hopefully I don't need my cheat sheet. 
Um, okay, question number one, name a faculty of science program that could lead to medical school. Within the faculty of science, we do recommend honor science, biology, or biomedical sciences. So if you gave us one of those three, that would be correct. What is one non-medical career that a science graduate could go into? Okay, I should have prepared myself for this one. Um, literally, it could be any any career. Like geologist, I think, is one that I, I could maybe think of. A pilot, a consultant, Laura, Caitlin, any others? I that saw you lawyer, would... I saw um, project manager, astronomer, uh, lots of lots of aviation, yep. So uh, pretty much anything you could engineer. have listed there. A what? Cleanliness engineer. Why not? A it's water not cleanliness engineer, more specifically, okay. actually. Great. Uh, so yeah, lots of uh, lots of options there. And uh, finally, number three is name a program that one of our students student guests are in. You could have let us know bio, math, physics, or science and business. Um, those are what our three are in. So, uh, Laura, I can find a winner, but Laura, do you have it ready? I have got a couple of winners here. Yep. So All it looks right. like Over our, to you. oh yeah, our winners this week are Rodrig and Julia. So we will follow up with the two of you to uh, confirm that you are the winners. I'm sorry if there's multiple people with those names in attendance today, but we're going to follow up with the actual winners uh, and uh, we'll send you an email in uh, the next day or so to let you know what your next steps are for claiming your own Waterloo Wood Warriors hoodie, which Jay and I still do not have. I'd uh, love to get my hands on one of those someday. But for now, we'll go to the Q&A. Uh, and we actually had, I think we probably broke our record for most questions so far this fall uh, in terms of the number of questions coming in. So glad to see that. And I scribbled down a few that I'll, uh, I think I'm going to send a few over to you first, Caitlin, um, because we had a lot of students today who are interested in our um, life sciences programs in particular. So that's great. You already very helpfully answered one of those questions about switching between programs. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to send two questions your way. So the first one is, could you share more about the difference between biology and biomedical sciences? Sure can, yeah. So biology is going to focus on all areas of life. So plants, animals, cells, humans, think about all living things. Where then if you think about biomedical sciences, they're just focusing in on that human health. So take away the plants, take away the animals in most cases, they're just focusing on humans. Um, one big difference that a lot of students like to consider is that biomedical does require physics as a first year course. You don't need it to get into it but you will take physics in first year because it's common on the MCAT and in medical school. Um, so it is definitely helpful if you're someone looking to go to medical school, um, but there will be that one single physics. You don't have to take it in high school. We will start at a high school level. The other difference is just that biomedical sciences is a regular only program where biology can be regular or co-op. Um, so a couple differences there between those two programs. Awesome. And to throw another one into the mix, I know you're here to talk about our science programs, but I know you're often asked about the difference between life sciences and health sciences. So could you talk a little bit about uh, those two programs besides the fact that they're in different faculties, of course? For sure. So this is a very common question that I get, and more specifically, which one is better? We see so often, and the answer is neither of them is better. I don't know if that was correct English, but you know They're what? Equally I'm good. There. Equally good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it depends on your interest and where your interests lie. So if you're thinking more of the life sciences route, I like to say you're focusing more on those hard sciences. So you're focusing more on the biology, on the chemistry. You're going to be in labs, that kind of stuff. Or rather, when you flip over to health and you look at the health sciences, they actually have a really awesome spectrum where they look at cell to society. So they will look a little bit at government, public policy, regulations um, within their classes where we don't look at that. So we don't look at um, any of sort of like the societal impacts in a large capacity, um, which is one of the big things that differentiate us. Both are great options for medical school. It just really depends which you feel fits you better. All right, and Kaylin, going to go back to you with another question here that uh, you've touched on this a little bit, but we've, it's probably been the most commonly one that's been asked this evening. Uh, what if a student can't decide 
Um, they're not sure which program might be best for them. They know Waterloo, they know science, they get here in first year. Is it flexible to switch? Um, and what if they discover minors later on that they want to add? So packing a lot into this question, but uh, no, what advice do you have? Yeah, no, that's all right. Absolutely. So this is one thing that we're actually really trying to focus on this year for recruitment and getting out there for students to know is that A, there's flexibility. So you don't have to apply to biology and biomedical sciences, just apply to one. Um, essentially, only apply to one program within the Faculty of Science unless you want to get into biotech CPA or aviation. If you're thinking of either of those two programs, make sure you apply into them. But if you're not sure about life physics or biomedical sciences, you're not sure between those life sciences and the physical sciences programs or even within them, just apply to one program. They all have the same entry requirements and we can change you in your first year or even before you start in your first year. So that's the first thing. Know that there's flexibility and know that you can change before you come to Waterloo or even in your first year, okay? Uh, the other thing is if you're thinking about adding a minor, you'll do that typically, typically in your second or third year, but there is a little bit of leeway for you there. So you won't apply into a minor when you apply on OUAC. Um, and some programs are gonna allow you to do minors where some programs, it'll be a little bit more challenging. So if you're in a program like biology, chemistry, physics, no problem, you can add on a minor. But if you're in a program like materials and nanoscience or biochemistry or any of those highly specialized program, then adding on a minor might be a little bit trickier. But you can definitely go chat with one of our academic advisors and they'll be able to help you see if you can fit in a, in, in a minor in your program. Bit of a pause on my mute button. Sorry, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I've got a question next that I'd like to send over to Martina. Um, so. In high school science courses, oftentimes there are labs, and in university science courses, there are also often labs, but I know there are difference, differences between the two. So could you talk a little bit more about how they differ from high school to university? Um, yes. Um, can I defer this one to Preck Reedy? Oh, maybe? yes, absolutely. She's taken Sorry. a bit more labs than I have. Go for it, Preck Reedy. I think the main thing that I would say they differ is you get to do a lot of things on your own. So like I mentioned in my chemistry labs, most of the things that you do are going to be on yourself from like making the solutions to try trading them. And it can definitely be an adjustment at the beginning. I even broke a few flasks in my first year, more than I would like to admit. And I was absolutely terrified, but everybody is super understanding and they do want you to succeed. So when you're a first time or coming into university, there's a lot of resources and help from TAs and professor. And then that's another one of my tips. Always reach out to TAs and professors if you have any problems. They can, a lot of time, their answers can change your perspective about the problem. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, that's not just a faculty of science thing either. All programs, uh, all students at Waterloo, a good tip for them. Uh, maybe not the breaking the flasks, but uh, thank you for sharing that today. Feeling comfortable enough to do that. Um, Eric, I saw that you answered a question in the Q&A and I wanted to give you the opportunity to kind of speak to it a little bit more. Um, students who are wondering about connecting with professors or doing some of this great research that is happening at Waterloo. Um, how does that even happen? And uh, and like, how do you find these opportunities and what, like, can an undergrad student actually be that involved um, in this kind of research? Mm -hmm. So that's a really great question. And one that a lot of people in my program and I think all science programs in general have had a lot, because when you think about science, like we mentioned before, you are thinking about wearing a lab coat or wearing goggles and doing research. So undergrad research is uh, less popular, I think, than, uh, than graduate research. Usually if you're doing undergrad research, it might be in your third or fourth year, uh, because at that point you've had enough course background to, uh, to really uh, provide, uh, provide good assistance to a professor in a lab on a project that they, have, that they either come up with for you or they already have a project that you can come work on. However, that's not to say uh, you should be waiting until your third and fourth year to start uh, emailing or trying to set up meetings with your professors because very frequently, unless they're like really busy or really have like no space in their group, they would love to come and have you uh, either email or talk to them in person when that's possible uh, and talk about their research, which you're interested in if you're thinking about maybe working with them uh, and either set up something that can be earlier since that's definitely possible uh, or something, uh, make a connection early and set that up later. 
And these could be professors that are teaching you courses, or they could just be a professor that you know, uh, you know the type of research that they do and you might be interested in it. Maybe they'll be teaching a course that you'll take later and you want to uh, send an email to them early to introduce yourself. Uh, so yeah, the biggest takeaway is definitely go for it. Uh, it's not a guaranteed thing, uh, but it is definitely a possibility and something that you should try to take advantage of if that's the sort of uh, career you might be interested in. Uh, perhaps it's a great way to uh, get build your resume for grad school because uh, there is uh, some people who are even able to get published on a paper as like a, as an author uh, before they even go to grad school, which is a great way to uh, to uh, pad up your resume for uh, for research in particular. Uh, and this is also true for both co-op students and regular students. Uh, it's not like a limit to like you have to be in one type of program or the other to do research with professor. Uh, either is good. Great reminder. OK, so speaking of co-op and regular, Caitlin, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. We have uh, some people who are very interested in co-op, but they're also very interested in biomedical sciences or science and aviation. So could you explain why those programs don't offer co-op? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so we have three programs that don't offer co-op. So that's science and aviation, honor science and biomedical sciences. So to start off with science and aviation doesn't offer co-op because you're going to get your flight training that's included in that. So that's really that hands on experiential learning piece. The other reason is that if you added in a co-op program, it would really elongate that, agree, that degree because you're going to use most of your summers to do your flight hours. So those summer months, that's when it's the best weather, hopefully the least cloudy. That's when you can really get out um, and, and accumulate a lot of those flight hours. For honor science and biomedical sciences, I'll kind of loop them together at the start. There's no co-op because we often see students going to medical school once they graduate from this program. So typically students don't pair with medical, like co-op with medical school if they know that's the pathway they for sure want to do because it just elongates your degree by about a year. Um, so in most cases, students want to get to medical school as quickly as possible. Um, so they take that co-op piece out of it. Not saying you can't do co-op and go to medical school. If you're thinking you want biomedical sciences though and you want co-op, what we recommend is applying to biology and then you can take some of those editor credits to mimic a biomedical program. Although it won't be the exact same, you'll be able to take some of those courses that a biomedical science student would take and you'll still have that co-op experience. All right, and uh, we are getting closer to the end here, but I want to give another question to Martina. Uh, so Caitlin did talk about um, first year being flexible enough that you can switch as you, as you discover more programs and the majors. And I think you had that experience, uh, correct? As a student, could you tell us a little bit more about how, how you discovered that and what you ended up in? Yes, of course. So um, when I first started at Waterloo, I was actually in chemistry. So I did one semester in chemistry and after the first semester, I started to realize that maybe the program wasn't for me. It was a lot of lab work and I was finding that it would be more maybe of a research based type of program, which I was thinking was not for me. So I started looking into other options and I found science and business and I thought it was really cool how you could take all the science courses that you like, but also taking business courses and getting those experiencing experiences and gaining those business skills. So I really liked the idea of that, but I wasn't too sure how that process would work or if it was possible. So what I did was I went to the undergraduate science undergraduate office and I was able to speak with my academic advisors and get some advice on uh, the programs, the differences and how switching programs would work. So um, I kind of realized that this program was something that I would definitely like. I really wanted to be able to have experiences in both the science field and the a business field. And it was a very flexible program in terms of taking the courses that you like with electives and things like that. So um, I realized that that was a program that I wanted to be in and they were also able to help me switch into it. So I was able to get into science and business by my second semester of first year. So I didn't miss too many things. I didn't, I wasn't behind as a lot of courses um, are general courses in first year. So they overlap with other programs. So it was easy for me to, to transition into that program and um, kind of take the business courses that I missed and it didn't put me behind or anything like that. So 
it's definitely possible and you just have to reach out to your advisors and get that advice from them and they can definitely help you in your first year. I'm glad to hear you had that experience and uh, yeah, that's all programs at Waterloo do have academic advisors. They're like your guidance counselor, uh, but they're for specific areas and uh, they're really helpful people. Just have to make sure that you make the time to go and see them and uh, let them know how they can help you out. So glad you had a positive experience there. OK, with that, uh, we are close to our hour now. So thank you, Caitlin, uh, for joining us this week and letting us know more about the 17 programs in science and uh, letting us know more about everything that the faculty offers. And uh, of course, thank you also to our students, Prakiti, Eric and Martina, for uh, sharing more of what it's like to be a student in the Faculty of Science. Before we wrap up, just a few quick reminders here and some uh, resources, things to remember. If you go to our tours and events page, you can learn more about ways to stay connected with us, including virtual campus tours, or even we have some in-person tours starting up. So you can find out details about how to sign up for those on our website. Get those brochures, whether it's the Viewbook or the Faculty of Science brochure, so you can get that map, or again, I don't know what you actually call it, but that really helpful tool that was in here showing all the programs and how they're connected might give you an idea of what might be best for you. And uh, next week, Laura and I actually aren't doing a Waterloo Wednesday. We're not taking time off. We're actually going to be a little bit busy because we've got two things coming up. Uh, next Tuesday, October 26th, we have the Ontario Universities Fair. So we are joining with the other 21 universities in Ontario and will be available from 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern time uh, doing some presentations and answering more of your questions. And then we have the Waterloo Virtual Open House happening on Saturday, October 30th. So we've got, we've got some things on the go next week. So we won't be having a Waterloo Wednesday, but you can find us there instead. And uh, with the virtual open house, just a tip, even if you can't make it on that day, still sign up and register to come because uh, you will still have access to all of the great webinars and uh, information that is posted there for up to 30 days after. So make sure you check that out. Of course, if you have any questions or if you're watching the recording, send them our way, liaison at uwaterloo.ca. So again, that's all from us. We'll see you in a couple weeks, November 3rd, uh, when we will be chatting with our friends from the Faculty of Mathematics. So see you then and have a good evening, everyone.